Hi everyone, welcome to uh, today's lecture. It's week six, right? Um, and today we will be talking about um, Jim Palahiri's uh, short story, uh, Temporary Matter. All right, so Jim Palahiri is um, an American author, right? Um, she's written short stories, novels, essays, um, and she's also written a memoir in Italian, right? Um, called In Other Words. Um, some of her popular works are Interpreter of Maladies, um, uh, An Accustomed Earth. Those are two collection of short stories. Um, and her novels include uh, The Lowland and The Namesake, right? Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm not sure of the, of the year, but there was a time, maybe five, six years ago, um, that she decided, so, so uh, Lahiri, um, I think, got her PhD in, um, in Renaissance art or something like that. Um, and she spent some time in, in Italy, right, um, during her um, PhD program, and she just, I guess, fell in love with Italy and fell in love with the language, right? And so she moved there about six years ago. Um, she moved there because she wanted to learn the language and she also wanted to um, write in Italian, right? Um, and, and so she did. She wrote, I think it was published two or three years ago, she wrote In Other Words, um, and that was, and she wrote that in, it's a memoir of her sort of, um, of her move to Italy and sort of like why she, she, she chose to, to, to learn a different language, to, to write in a different language. Um, and so that experience, right, uh, was in the memoir. Um, and she wrote that in Italian. Um, I read the, the English translation. She did not translate it into English. She had someone else translate it into English. Um, but yeah, but she, she wrote that in Italian, right? Because um, I guess writing in English is not enough for her. <laughs> she decided to, to, to write in Italian. Um, right, so Interpreter of Maladies, uh, the collection of short stories, um, which uh, obviously um, includes uh, our reading, A Temporary Matter, um, won, won her a Pulitzer Prize, right, which is, you know, one of the, uh, the, the, the biggest uh, American awards for, for novels and for literature. Right. So, A Temporary Matter, right. Um, so on the surface, right, it seems, the story seems pretty straightforward, right. Um, it seems to be about a couple, right, who, um, who, who, who has a pretty sort of typical routine, kind of everyday routine, right, um, and it seems there's a little bit of tension, right, uh, between them, um, and this tension, right, is sparked with is, or is sparked by um, uh, the temporary matter, which is um, uh, this uh, temporary notice of blackout, right, for the next uh, few days. <clears throat> um, and so they sort of, right, decide um, to, to have dinner together right, in the dark, um, and during these dinners, um, Shoba uh, wanted uh, for them to sort of share um, things about each other that they have never shared before, right, as, as, a, as a kind of dinner game, right. Um, and so, and so throughout these uh, these nights, right, where they share um, secrets to each other, um, we also sort of learn um, about about their relationship, about their sort of individual experiences, right, uh, their desires, right, 
Um, and <clears throat> right, and 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 towards the end, right, um, and of course the 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 sort of um, important part of the story is 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 the death of of their uh, newly born son, right, um, and that sort of triggered, right, everything uh, changes in their relationship. Um, and so towards the end, um, we learn that uh, Shoba um, has decided to um, to move out, to, to, to separate from uh, Shokumar, and she had uh, set up a, an apartment where she was going to move to. Um, and she's sort of set up, set up an, uh, a new life for her, right, just uh, for her by herself. Um, and, and Shukumar seems to sort of, you know, find this uh, very shocking, right? Um, and, and so she, he also shares a secret to, to Shoba about their son and you know, we're sort of like left with this moment where they sort of, in, in Lahiri's word, right, which is, I think, the most, uh, I don't know, it's the most intense, but also the most intimate uh, sentence, right, uh, I think. Um, in, in, in the story, which is the last sentence, they wept together for the things they now know, or they now knew, right? Um, and I don't know, that sentence just kind of gets me all the time. Um, right, so, so first off, you know, I, <clears throat> sorry, there's a, an insect. Um, <clears throat> So on the surface, right, it seems to be a pretty straightforward narrative, right? Um, uh, descriptions of everyday um, experiences of the characters, this descriptions of, you know, their sort of, uh, their sort of, um, this kind of like tedious um, daily routine, right? Um, and and that's I think that's precisely why I, I like um, Jhumpa Lahiri's works because she focuses on the sort of the everyday right, which is very relatable, right to uh, to us. Um, like on the one hand, it seems kind of pointless, right, that, that she just describes all of these things uh, um, in detail. But the more you sort of think about it, the more you um, the more you read the, the descriptions, the details, um, carefully, right, um, you actually kind of discover um, that these descriptions, the seemingly pointless descriptions of details, right, uh, um, actually they sort of, um, they provide sort of uh, uh, information, right, um, about what's going on with the characters, what's going on with the narrative, right? Um, but also, it, it provides a kind of emotional, right? Um, um, an emotional background, right? To, um, to, to, to what's going on in the story, what's going on in the characters, right? Um, and I think that ability, right, to to sort of use descriptions, use dialogues, right, uh, within a story um, to convey emotion, right, and to convey sentiment. Um, that's kind of what I like about, you know, about, about, um, about Lahiri's writing, right. Um, Right, so I just want to read the first couple of paragraphs, right, of the story and kind of see what, what I mean by this, you know, um, by the descriptions of daily routine and how she sort of adds um, depth to those descriptions, right? <clears throat> All right, so a temporary matter. The notice informed them that it was a temporary matter. 
For five days, their electricity would be cut off for one hour beginning at 8 p.m. A line had gone down the last snowstorm, and the repairmen were going to take advantage of the milder evenings to set it right. The work would affect would affect only the houses on the quiet tree-lined street within walking distance of a row of brick-faced stores and a trolley shop and a trolley stop where Shoba and Shukumar had lived for three years. It's good of them to warn us, Shoba conceded after reading the notice aloud, more for her own benefit than Shukumar's. She left the strap of her leather satchel, plump with files, slip from her shoulders, and left it in the hallway as she walked into the kitchen. She wore a navy blue poplin raincoat over gray sweatpants and white sneakers, looking at 33 like the type of woman she'd once claimed she would never resemble. She'd come from the gym. Her cranberry lipstick was visible only on the outer reaches of her mouth, and her eyeliner had left charcoal patches beneath her lower lashes. She used to look this way sometimes, Shukumar thought, in mornings after a party or a night at the bar, when she'd been too lazy to wash her face, too eager to collapse into his arms. She dropped a sheaf of mail on the table without a glance. Her eyes were still fixed on the notice on the other hand, but they should do this thing, this sort of thing, during the day. When I'm here, you mean, Shukumar said. He put a glass lid on a pot of lamb, adjusting it so only the slightest bit of steam could escape. Since January, he had been working at home, trying to complete the final chapters of his dissertation on agrarian revolts in India. When do the repairs start? Right. Um, so, right. So, so on the surface, again, right, we just kind of, we, uh, a, uh, a certain scene is set for us um, where uh, a notice, right, of, of a, uh, of a blackout um, was coming for for a few days, <clears throat> but throughout this you know this this scene right where um, where Shoba comes home from work right um, we get little bits and pieces right of of information um, so they've lived in the house for three years right um, it seems. Um, uh, Shoba is the one working, right? Um, while Shokumar is um, is is at home, sort of domesticated at home, right? Doing the cooking and stuff like that, right? Um, we get the information that Shoba is thirty three, right? Um, and um, she wore navy blue poplin raincoat over gray sweatpants and white sneakers, looking at thirty three, like the type of woman she'd once claimed she would never resemble. Right, so so we get a sense that that Shoba wasn't always like this. She wasn't always sort of the one working. Probably, um, she wasn't always the one sort of like rushing into the house, um, kind of disheveled. Right, um, she perhaps maybe was judgmental of of people like that. She maybe you know as we know you know you've, you've read the story she was she used to be you know very organized and you know <clears throat> so now she's the one kind of like you know rushing and disheveled and stuff like that right um she'd come from the gym right um and so she has sort of this life outside of, of the house right um <clears throat> and while shokumar um, is writing his dissertation Right, he's at home. He's doing all the, you know, uh, the domestic stuff. Uh, his cooking, right? So, so we get a sense, right, um, immediately that there is changes in in there. There, there might have been, right, um, recent changes in the dynamic of of the household, right? Uh, and obviously, you know, having read the entire story, you should know that you know th this is exactly right. Um, what's what what's what's happened, um, and and yeah, so 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 in the beginning we get sort of hints, right, of of uh, of 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 what the story 
Rhett is going to reveal later on. Right, another thing that I really like about her writing too is how good she is at describing kind of weird, um, awkward details about, you know, something that people do, right? Um, so notice on page, let's see, it's on page one, um, halfway through the page towards, uh, towards the uh, later part of the page, um, he ran his tongue over the tops of his teeth. He had forgotten to brush them that morning. It wasn't the first time. He hadn't left the house at all that day or the day before. Right. So this like act of like um, uh, brushing, you know, your tongue um, on top of your teeth. And then you realize that you haven't, <laughs> you know, washed your teeth. Right. Um, it's, it's a very kind of... It's a strange detail because it's not the kind of detail that you would read about, right? Usually, um, uh, but but of course, you know, these are the things that that happen to us. You know, sometimes we're, we're too much in a rush, or maybe we just don't care, right? Um, and then we, we notice, right, that um, yeah, like you haven't. You, then you kind of like realize that oh, I didn't brush my teeth, <laughs> um, and. And yeah, so, and so we get a sense, right, um, that that happened because, you know, something has happened to Shukumar, right, that um, set or, or made him sort of stay at home, right? Um, and also being at home just kind of, there was a change in his routine, right, um, from, from being set in a one way, right, to another, right? Um, he hadn't left the house all that day at all that day or the day before, right? So, yeah, so like little things like that, I don't know, I I kind of appreciate. Um, all right, um, and so, let's see. Right, so, so we get on page two, um, we get sort of a flashback, right, of, of, of the time when, um, <clears throat> When Shoba was uh, was pregnant, right, um, and Shukumar um, had to go to a conference in Baltimore, um, and um, and and Shukumar hesitated to go to the conference because Shoba would be, you know, due anytime soon, right? Um, but then Shoba sort of uh, uh, insisted that he'd go because, um, you know. That he'd go into a conference, uh, he would meet people that that might you know help him out you know when he's when he starts looking for a job right so so Shoba insisted that he go uh, for the sake of you know um, networking and things like that right so so Shoba has this very sort of um, very orderly way of and and she 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 sort of she plans everything right and she doesn't let sort of um little everyday things right um get in the way of those sort of long-term plans right so she, 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 she seems very practical right um, um yeah that you know it's not really important to that you know you, you 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 have to be here right um just because i'm pregnant right it's more important that you take care of your job right type of thing um, and so, and so Shokumar ended up going to the conference, right? Um, and while in, in the conference, sure enough, um, Shoba, um, um, had to deliver the baby and the baby turned out, uh, to be dead right after, right? Um, and so, um, in the conference, uh, while in the conference, uh, Shokumar, uh, sort of, um, got the news right and and learned of it uh, um, from from a note right um, and so like this this uh, paragraph that I'm gonna read is when he finds out that the baby had been born dead right so a member of the staff had found him somehow among the identical convention rooms and handed him a stiff square of stationery it was only a telephone number but Shukumar knew it was the hospital. 
When he returned to Boston, it was over. The baby had been born dead. Uh, sorry, like just notice that that alliteration of the word "be," right? Um, it, it makes that statement very intense, right? Um, even though it's a very short sentence, and it's just kind of like, you know, the the the, the information, right, that the baby had been born dead. It's it's kind of like it's given in this very short sentence, but the intensity, I think, is strong because of how that, that sentence is um, sort of uh, formed, right? The baby had been born dead, right? So the alliteration of the word be, like, gave it kind of like a, an intensity, right? Um, I think. I don't know, I could be just making that up too. <laughs> um, right, so when he returned to Boston, it was over. The baby had been born dead. Shoba was lying on a bed, asleep in a private room, so small there was barely enough space to stand beside her in a wing of the hospital they hadn't been to on the tour for expectant parents. Right. Her placenta had weakened and she'd had a caesarean, though not quickly enough. The doctor explained that these things happen. He smiled in the kindest way it was possible to smile at people known only professionally. Shoba would be back on her feet in a few weeks there was nothing to indicate that she would not be able to have children in the future. Right. So this very short paragraph, right, um, has so much information in it. And also there's so much movement, right, for, of time, right, from, uh, from the conference, um, uh, sort of the convention center, right, where um, Shokumar was, um, back to the hospital, right? Um, so there's so much movement in time, so much information being given to us, right? But uh, but somehow, you know, it sort of, it captured the emotion, I think, of the scene, right? Like, like the little kind of um, detail, right? Where, where it says, Shoba was lying on a bed asleep in a private room in a small, in a private room so small there was barely enough space to stand beside her in a wing of the hospital they hadn't been to on the tour for expectant parents, right? So, so Shoba obviously is in the part of the hospital where, you know, they, when they went for a tour, right, they didn't go to because, you know, you wouldn't really expect for your baby to be dead, right? Um, so, you, so you go on a tour in the hospital of the places where you're supposed to you know, be situated at, right? Um, um, assuming, right, that the baby is going to be born healthy. Uh, but obviously, right, sometimes, like, the death part is not sort of planned for, right? So so that sort of detail, right, um, it kind of, um, I think it, 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 it sort of, it gives it that, that emotion, right, um, in the story. <clears throat> right, um, and also like the description of the doctor, um, th th that smile, right, the professional smile that sort of a doctor gives to um, to a patients, uh, to 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 their patient, right. Um, also very well placed here. So, so yeah, so like little things like that, right. I think you um, you can kind of. Um, you can you, you can you can pick up right um, in 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 the descriptions of, of um, the details right right so on page three right we find out um, sort of what the dynamic was right um, between between the couple right um, before the baby um, had been born dead right and so. Uh, it seems that um, that Shoba was uh, was the one taking care of the house, right? Uh, she was the housewife, um, and it seems she's very organized, right? She she does all these like little things in the house, like organize the pantry, right? Make sure there's dinner um, when Shokumar comes home from work, right? Um, and 
and she also liked to plan ahead, right? Um, <clears throat> let's let's look at this um, passage in the middle of page three. Um, it was typical of her. She was the type of she was the type to prepare for surprises, good and bad. If she found a skirt or purse she liked, she bought two. She kept the bonuses from her job in a separate bank account in her name. It hadn't bothered him. His own mother had fallen to pieces when his father died, abandoning the house he grew up in and moving back to Kolkata, leaving Shukumar to settle it all. He liked that Shoba was different. It astonished him, her capacity to think ahead. When she used to do the shopping, the pantry was always stocked with extra bottles of olive oil, corn oil, depending on whether they were cooking Italian or Indian. There were endless boxes of pasta in all shapes and colors, zippered lap, zippered socks, zippered sacks of basmati rice, whole sides of lambs and goats from the Muslim butchers at Hay Market, chopped up and frozen in endless plastic bags. Every other Saturday, they wound up, they, they wound through the maze of stalls Shukumar eventually knew by heart. He, he watched in disbelief as she bought more food, trailing behind her with canvas bags as she pushed through the crowd, arguing under the morning sun with boys too young to shave but already missing teeth. All right, so, so yeah, so, so, um, so Shoba is, you know, this, like, she, she plans everything, um, she, she makes sure, she makes sure everything is, you know, um, is in order, uh, the house and, and, and things like this, right? Um, and and uh, Shukumar seems to to find uh, you know comfort in this because you know um, it, it seems Shukumar's mother um, uh, is not like that, right? She's she uh, it seems um, his mother you know came from this sort of culture where. Um, the the wife sort of depended on uh, everything, right? Um, or, or or depended everything on um, on the husband, right? And when the husband uh, dies or whatever, right? Uh, the, the the wife usually doesn't know, know what to do and how to sort of move on, right? Um, and so and so he liked that Shoba is this person who. Um, he can depend on who knows how to plan right um, and things like that right um, but of course he will find out that later on <laughs> Shoba has actually planned on on leaving him right and, and separating um, right so 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 we get and then there's a lot more details right if you're if you're interested in sort of thinking right um, if, if you're interested in this idea of the cause and effect, right, the issue of cause and effect, right, so as you, as you think about how you're going to write about this story, right, um, the characters definitely, I think, are the main focus um, uh, of this story. Um, and thinking about, you know, the things that they do, right, um, throughout the story, Right, um, especially the um, towards the end, right? Um, Shoba's decision to to, to leave, right, um, and Shukumar's the decision to to tell uh, Shoba this um, horrifying secret, right, about about the gender of of their son, right, <clears throat> of their of their dead child, right. Um, yeah, so like all these all these decisions that they make, right? All these things that they decide to tell each other um, throughout the five nights, right? That they have the dinner uh, because of the blackout. Um, you can then go back to like the little details like this, right? Um, and trace, uh, for example, you know why they decide to do these things, right? What is it about their experience, right? What is it about their personality, right? Um, that led them to, um, uh, to you know, making these big life decisions, right? So, so tracing the causes, right, of of their decisions. That's something, right, that you can do. 
um, to think about the issue of cause and effect, to think about the issue of characters, right? And do they develop? Do, do they sort of, um, right? Do they get stuck behind, right, to their experiences and things like that, right? So, so that's one way, right, um, to, um, to think about, uh, you know, if, you, if you're still deciding on what to uh, write about for your paper. Right. Um, and so another, right, so characters, in terms of characters, um, and you can also think about this story in terms of sort of a, um, I guess in a, in, in a feminist way, Right, where you think about um, Shoba's actions, right, um, and you think about what she was before, and then what she ended up, you know, becoming, right, um, and and I guess from a sort of feminist uh, point of view, you can think about. Um, right, how how her desires developed, right, um, and how she sort of started, how and when she sort of started, um, I guess, taking charge of her desires, right, um, um, when she sort of decided not to do things for the family, right, um, and started doing things for herself, right, um, and, and, and the main, and this is the, the difference, right, between stories and real life, right, mm -hmm. is that tragedy doesn't, or tragedy comes in different forms, right, some worse than others, right, um, but I guess, you know, in, in like a fictional story like this, right, um, Lahiri uses uh, the tragedy of the, the, the dead child, right, to kind of as something that creates, um, um, so, so there is tension, right, already between the two characters, and so the tragedy sort of I guess it just kind of um, made that tension even clearer, right? Um, and it, it sort of made them, um, sort of pushed them, I guess, to the brink, right? It's sort of the, the tragedy sort of pushed them to, to do um, the things that, you know, they probably couldn't have done, right? Um, if, if they, Shoba, you know, if, if, if the if the child survived, right, she would probably she would have probably stayed, you know, as a domesticated mother, right, taking care of the child and, and she would probably find pleasure in that too, right, being able to organize things and whatever for the family, right. Um, but of course that didn't happen. So so something else in her was triggered, right, and then she went uh, a different way, right. And so, so yeah, so it start, it's, it's worth thinking about her character in a feminist way where she sort of, um, she started, yeah, doing things more in, in a more selfish way, right? And, and how do we think about that? Is, is that just selfish or is there something more to that? Can we defend, right, so to speak, Shoba's actions, right? Right, so another way that you can write about um, about this story, right, is I guess from the perspective of, sort of from, from a cultural perspective, right? Um, obviously, um, and so just a little bit of uh, background, I guess, from uh, background um, of Lahiri's life, right? So, so Jhumpa Lahiri was, uh, uh, her parents were born in, 
were from the uh, West Bengal in India, right? Um, and then they moved to London for work uh, where Jhumpa Lahiri was born, right? Um, and then they moved to the US, right? Uh, when, when Lahiri was three, right? Um, and she and her family often visited Calcutta uh, because her mother wants her children to become, I guess, more familiar with, uh, with her heritage. Right. Um, and so Lahiri sort of, I guess, she, she, she always described herself as an American, right? Um, and and she, she actually didn't like uh, her work being described as an immigrant uh, narrative, right? Um, it just so happened that uh, her parents are from India um, and, and she sort of grew up right visiting india uh, frequently right and so so that is so that narrative is part of her story right uh, but she didn't like the idea that you know that her her book was where it was described sort of immigrant narratives right um but but that's what it is right um she sort of because of her experience she her narrative right um um, offer stories of, of, of immigrant um, experiences, right? And, and the kinds of things that um, uh, one experiences um, having to move from one culture to another, right? Um, but, but I think more than that, what's, what's even more important, right, is like, uh, I guess, describing the differences, right, in, in that immigrant experience. Right. So, so for example, in the story, um, Shokumar seems to, I, I can't remember exactly, but it's either he was born in America or he came to America at a very young age, right? And so he is very Americanized, right? Um, well, Shoba, right? Um, so he is, so Shokumar is, is very Americanized, um, but he also sort of wants to be connected more to his Indian heritage, right? Um, to, 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 um, um, and so there's this, let's see, there's this passage in page four. Shukumar returned to the kitchen and began to open drawers. He tried to locate a candle among the scissors, the egg beaters and the whisks, the mortar and pestle she bought in a bazaar in Kolkata and used to pound garlic, cloves and cardamom pods back when she used to cook. He found a flashlight, but no batteries, and a half-empty box of birthday candles. Shoba had thrown him a surprise party. Birthday party last May. 120 people had crammed into the house. All the friends and friends of friends they now systematically avoided. Um, right. So, <clears throat> right, so, so there's this, like, hints, right, of Shokumar sort of um, remembering right his his visits in Kolkata right um, that's uh, so that's kind of like similar to to how Lahiri sort of used to visit Kolkata um, at a young uh, as a young sort of uh, when she was younger right um, and and yeah so 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 there is this kind of need it seems right there is this need for Shukumar to be to be more in touch with his Indian uh, heritage, right? Um, while Shoba, on the other hand, um, I think came to America when she was already older, right? Um, and so she is still sort of breaking, it seems she's breaking away from her, um, from her, um, from her past, right? And then sort of more interested in kind of assimilating more or or um, she seems to be more interested in, in experiencing the different kinds of, of freedoms, right, um, that, um, that, that she had, right, in America. Like certain things that she can do back home, she can now do here, or she feels like she can do here. Um, so there is this kind of uh, conflicting desires, right, of, of where they want to be. And so that sort of, and so that immigrant experience, that those different immigrant experiences, right, sort of 
also created a tension between the two characters, right? And I think that's really important in how to think about immigrant experience, right? Uh, uh, not to sort of assume that everyone who is an immigrant, right, um, will understand each other, right? Be because obviously um, each sort of immigrant experience um, is different um, and um, has a different historical context, right? Um, so, so that's another thing that I, I like about um, sort of Lahiri's description of that sort of immigrant experience, right? Yeah, and I guess lastly, um, I'll just read the last paragraph, right? And I'll kind of like leave it up to you to, to what that might mean, right? Um, so Shukumar stood up and stacked his plate on top of hers. So this is, right, after the fact that they've all sort of shared um, their, you know, deepest secrets, right? Um, and um, Shoba has decided to separate and move out, right, um, by herself. And then Shukumar also told uh, Shoba that he, in fact, sort of held their dead child um, and sort of found out the gender of the child, right, something that Shoba um, didn't want to to know, I think, because like her, maybe, you know, her process of grieving was to, um, I guess if she didn't know the gender of the child, right, um, and the fact that she did not, she was not able to touch the child, right, um, the, the dead child, right, um, made the child less human, right, um, for Shoba. And as long as the child is not sort of human enough, right, um, she'll be able to, to, to grieve less, if that's possible, right. Um, so the mystery, right, of the child's gender um, sort of meant that Shoba was able to, um, yeah, I guess grieve, I don't know, grieve less, right? I, it, it's hard to, to kind of um, generalize what that experience uh, um, would be like, right? Um, and so Shukumar telling Shoba the gender, right? It made the baby um, more human to Shoba, right? And so this caused a lot of pain, right, for Shoba also. Um, right, so he carried the plates to the sink, but instead of running the tap, he looked out the window. Outside, the evening was still warm, and the Bradfords were walking arm in arm. As he watched a couple, the room went dark, and he spun around. Shoba had turned the lights off, she came back to the table and sat down, and after a moment, Shukumar joined her. They wept together for the things they now knew. Right. So, so think about the, the metaphors, too, of, of darkness and lightness, or, or, or darkness and light, right? Um, and of course, you know, that metaphor is you know, knowledge, right, and ignorance, right, um, and so there, there seems to be a play on, you know, the dark night, you know, eating in the dark, and then sharing knowledge, right, um, but then also, you know, when the light went back, and then they all knew all these things, right, all, like, they, they knew um, all this new information, and it seems it's not, they're not better off, right? <laughs> they're, they're more sad, right, that they knew things. They, they wept together for the things they now knew, right? So, so this idea that 
knowledge is supposed to be sort of um, the thing that frees us, the thing that makes us um, move on or um, feel better or whatever, right? Um, but it seems in this case, knowledge only hurt them, right? Um, and knowledge only, uh, I mean, that's one way to read it, right? You could also argue that maybe, you know, the knowledge made them, you know, better people, made them sort of move on and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, so yeah, so, so think about that ending, right? And where, uh, what you, what you think that might mean, right? Um, in terms of, um, darkness and light, right? And knowledge and ignorance, right? Because uh, that's definitely uh, there, right? Um, so I think that's it for now. Um, and I will have a, a second video for this week um, about arguing about literature, right? Because, um, you know, you're, you're reading uh, also uh, some pages on uh, from arguing about literature, right? So, uh, so I'll do a separate video uh, for that. Um, but yeah, hopefully this was um, helpful and start thinking about um, uh, what you want to write about for your second essay, right? Oh, by the way, right, so for your second essay, this is very important. Um, for your second essay, um, I will give you the prompt by I think by this Friday, right? Because um, it's due not this Sunday, but the Sunday after, right? So it's it's coming up. So you should be thinking about this now. Um, right. For the so for the second essay, um, you can either write about Sunny's Blues, right, which is the reading for this week, or you can either Sonny's Blues or A Temporary Matter. So those are your choices for the second essay, right? Um, and, and the prompt is pretty much the same, right? Um, close readings. So, so exactly the same, except it's going to be longer, right? Um, how much longer? Right, so the first paper uh, is uh, 1,100 words. The second paper is 1,200 words, right? So um, the prompt is exactly the same, except that, you know, it's a little bit longer, right? Um, and you have to choose from temporary matter or, um, or Sonny's Blues, right? Um, but, I, but I will still give you the prompt uh, for the second essay on Friday. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty much the same, still no outside research, right? Um, the pa paper three, it, it will be slightly different because you will then be required to do some research, right? So, so for the third paper, you will be required to do research, right? Um, but for the second paper, it's the same as the first one, just longer, right? Um, but yeah, I'll talk about that in the next video. Bye.